Hello, I'm Kelly Harangalanti, and welcome back. We hope you've been enjoying our video posts as we discuss the happenings in Boston that led to the destruction of the tea. Are you ready for more? Join me now for Tempest in a Teapot. After hearing from Mr. Hartley, the administrator of the hospital at Rainsford Island, the town selectmen issue new orders regarding the tea on board the beaver and the potential case of smallpox. In addition to the vessel being smoked and cleansed, they order all other cargo brought ashore on Rainsford Island, with the exception of the tea. If the weather permits, the tea is to be laid out on deck every day to air out. However, every night it must then be put back in the hold. Mr. Hartley and two others are ordered to remain on deck to watch over the tea to ensure that not a single chest is landed and to give an immediate report to the selectmen if any attempt should be made to do so. All other cargo is to be removed and the vessel smoked and cleansed. The Boston Committee of Correspondence summons Francis Roach and asks him if the Customs House has denied him clearance for the Dartmouth to leave Boston and return to England with the tea on board. He replies that he has not made that request. The Committee of Correspondence strongly urges him to formally apply for clearance and pass by the cannons of Castle Island. However, during informal conversations with customs officials, Roach was informed that no such clearance would be granted until the duties were paid. The Boston Committee of Correspondence invites the committees of Dorchester, Roxbury, Brookline, Cambridge, and Charlestown to meet at 10 a.m. at Faneuil Hall on Monday, December 13th. After fighting stormy weather for about 24 hours, the fourth Boston-bound ship, the William, runs aground on a sandbar off Cape Cod near Provincetown. Captain Joseph Loring orders the anchors let out, which holds the vessel from wrecking for several more hours. By morning, facing the loss of ship, cargo, and crew, Captain Loring uses the storm surge to his advantage and finally orders the anchors cut loose and the William is driven onto the beach about two miles east of Race Point on Cape Cod. Back in Boston Harbor, Captain James Bruce travels to Castle Island to speak with the consignees. He states that he is ready to deliver the tea and demands payment. The consignees again refuse to receive the tea or pay for delivery. Captain Bruce then goes ashore and meets with a notary where his protest against the consignees is officially recorded. Now with only days to go until the 245th anniversary and annual reenactment of the Boston Tea Party, we invite you to join us for our big event on December 16th here in Boston. But if you're not in Boston and you want to watch the event right where you are, visit our Facebook page for our live stream or on boston.com that evening. Till then, stay tuned.